Today I want to address a critical, critical question regarding what's going on. What's going on in Syria right now? Civil war? Rebels? Iran? Assad? And how does it impact here in Israel? So the situation in Syria is a bit complex, but at its core it's all about one thing. The weakening of Iran's influence in the Middle East by the toppling of the Assad regime. For years, Shiite Iran has been trying to solidify its control over across the Middle East, primarily through its Shia Muslim axis, which includes Hezbollah in Lebanon and the Alawite Assad regime in Syria. But here's the key. The Sunni rebels in Syria are gradually weakening Assad in Syria right now, and in turn, they are weakening Iran, which is great news. When Assad's regime was strong, it was a significant pillar of Iran's power in the region. But again, understand, the Shia are a minority in the Middle East. It's the Sunnis who are the majority. So when the Sunni rebels are gaining more ground in Syria, Iran's hold is weakening in the Middle East. This is evident in Syria right now, all because Israel has decimated Iran's proxy Hezbollah in Lebanon. It's only because of that that the Sunni rebels are going after Assad. They've been wanting to destroy the Iranian Shia stranglehold in the Middle East for years and take down the Assad regime, again a minority. That's what Saddam Hussein was all about in Iraq, stopping the Shiite Muslim Iran. When the Bush administration toppled Saddam Hussein in the Second Gulf War, the United States opened the door for the Iranian Shiite regime minority to take over the whole Middle East. Today, thanks to Israel's actions against Hezbollah in Lebanon and the Sunni rebels assault right now in Syria, Iran is finally being pushed back and this significantly hampers Iran's efforts in Lebanon against Israel since it will be much harder for them to transfer weapons to Hezbollah. Syria geographically was their supply chain to get weapons to Hezbollah and Lebanon. This is a huge blow to Iran's strategy of consolidating power in the region and its strategy to destroy Israel. That's all the good news. Finally, the Shiite Muslims are going down. But while we're seeing Iran's weakening influence, the situation in Syria has become much more volatile and it has implications. With a successful invasion of Syria, the Sunni rebel factions are growing stronger. But there's one thing that's clear. This is creating a much more dangerous Middle East. A volatile situation in the Middle East, one where sectarian violence is escalating. Sunnis and Shiites will be killing each other at unprecedented rates. And for Israel, this means we need to be more vigilant, especially on our northern border with Syria, where the rebels will be in control instead of Assad's regime. See, under Assad's regime in Syria, there was at least a sense of stability, even though we knew the regime was aligned with Iran. So Israel knew how to deal with a stable Assad regime. But now, with the Sunni rebels gaining ground in Syria, we're entering a totally new phase of total instability in the region and in Syria. This new inst instability might push Israel to take action in Syria as well against the rebels, finding ourselves in a position where we will need to liberate areas in Syria to ensure that northern Israel is protected from the growing Sunni violence and instability in Syria. So the bottom line is this. We are witnessing a total realignment in the Muslim Middle East. The Sunni majority in the Middle East is finally pushing back against the Iranian Shiite minority stranglehold by regaining control from the Shia minority. But this is also a period of immense violence and turmoil with killing and population movements taking place across the region, right? Uh, Syria could be Iraq, and it's all because of one thing, Muslims fighting and killing fellow Muslims, a tragedy that the world ignores. Only when Muslims are killed or lose their homes because of Israel does it make the news. Otherwise, the world doesn't care when Muslims kill, massacre, and expel fellow Muslims. Because the world goes, no Jews, no news. And while the world may turn a blind eye to this, we know the truth. The best and safest place in the Middle East for Muslims, all Muslims, and all minorities, is in the Jewish state of Israel. All are living, and here we have Arabs living right here. Only when they live under the Jewish state of Israel is there peace, stability, and respect for all people, including Sunni and Shiite Muslims, who otherwise kill each other in other Middle East countries. Only under the Jewish state of Israel do Muslims, Christians, Jews, 
Jews all live in peace together. This also means that Israel must remain forever in southern Lebanon. Not just as a strategic move, it's about making sure that northern Israel remains secure and protecting our Arab Muslim citizens, our Christian and Druze citizens, as well as our Jewish citizens in Israel. Because all non-Sunni Muslims are targets of potential massacres by the growing Sunni rebel forces in Syria and Iraq and wherever it's going to be. So the chaos in Lebanon and Syria can't be ignored. And Israel has no choice but to keep these regions under control, making some of them Jewish and secure once again. Now let's jump and talk about Gaza. So recently I saw a video of a man from Gaza pleading, pleading to leave Gaza. Watch this. <laughs> אין מים, אין חשמל, אין כסף, אין עבודה, אין השתרות של כסף, אין פירות, אין... אין שום דבר. מה אתם רוצים ממנה? תנו לנו לנסוע. אתה יודע, סמי, יצא לנו לדבר כמה פעמים במהלך המלחמה, אני לא חושב ששמעתי אותך ככה מיואש. אני מיואש מאוד, ואני רוצה. אני בונה לממשלת ישראל, בונה לנתניהו, תפתח לנו את המעבר, תן לנו לצאת. אין מה לחיות בעזה, לא אני. אלפים, אלפים, אלפים. אנחנו נעזוב את עזה לך ולך. That Gazan tells the truth, and he is pleading. They want to leave en masse. They want to leave. They want to run away from there. They have no life there. But here's the tragic reality. The world is silent when it comes to Gaza. Think about this. Somehow, the enlightened Western world supported Syrian refugees and Ukrainian refugees immigrating all over the world in order to leave those war zones. But only Gazans must remain, right? The Biden administration, European leaders, no, they can't leave. They must remain there. See the hypocrisy? And to this day, the Biden administration continues to forbid Gazans from leaving Gaza, despite the fact that many Gazans celebrated and took part in the October 7th massacre. There are no innocent civilians in Gaza. And I did a video about that back, back in the beginning of the war. So it's time for the world to recognize that Israel cannot allow a Gazan population to continue living there who all supported, participated in, and celebrated in the horrific massacre of October 7th to live amongst us or anywhere near us. We must ensure that the people of Gaza have the opportunity to live elsewhere, far away from Israel's borders. And we're waiting patiently for President Trump to come into office and hopefully exert pressure on Egypt to open up the Rafah border so that Gazans can leave and rebuild their lives elsewhere. And then we have full security with Gaza. That is the right, just, and moral thing to do, not just for Israelis, but for those Gazans. Get them out of there, live anywhere else. That is the best deterrence against future attacks against us. The lesson must be learned. Anyone who attacks us loses their land. It's that simple. Don't attack us if you don't want to lose your land or your homes. Despite all this, there is so much hope. The Jewish people in Israel, we are resilient and our future is very, very bright. Yes, the reality of the brutal Middle East is undeniable, brutal. But we must take the necessary steps to protect ourselves. That includes taking back our lands in Gaza and southern Lebanon, the tribal lands of Asher and Naftali, as both a punishment and deterrence against the forces that seek to destroy us and because it's the right thing to do. So in conclusion, welcome to the new old Middle East, where it's the Sunni majority who's going to be in control. It's going to be a volatile time, but Israel will continue to stand strong, safeguarding our people and our land, ensuring that we remain and become a beacon of peace and stability in this tumultual region and a beacon of light to the whole freedom-loving world. And it all goes back to this pasuk, to this phrase from the Torah. Ki mitzion teitzei Torah miyushalayim. From Zion, Torah, 
From Zion, Jerusalem, Torah will emanate. It's the Jewish people, by us living here as proud Jews, connected to our ancestral traditions and our Torah, living here in our ancestral homeland. That's how we make a difference in the world. It's by us being us in our homeland, the chosen people in the chosen land, with and living according to our chosen Torah. That's the secret sauce, not just for the Jewish people, but for humanity. Signing off for another inspiring, politically incorrect, belief-based Pulse of Israel in our ancestral homeland. If you are not yet a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Go to PulseofIsrael.com and click to subscribe. And we're a donor-based organization. These videos are free to watch, but we're heavily censored on social media, all social media platforms. And it's thanks to your donations, big and small, that we're able to continue our work and get our videos seen. So if you support the work we do, you support more people, people hearing these messages you want us to succeed in getting these videos and messages seen and heard by more people every once in a while click on the donate button on pulseofisrael.com in the meantime shalom everyone from the beautiful ancestral homeland of the jewish people the judean hills this is avi abelo for another episode of the pulse of israel pulse of israel frontline videos from the holy land support our work by donating today